Mm -hmm. Not over there. Mm -hmm. They head person to me. We getting it. Getting it. Got a crowd mm -hmm. around us. This the hold on at that time in my life, right? This like the highlight of my life, right? I get to like <laughs> a Jehovah's Witness, right? In the in the street in the hood. That's that's like big. Yes, sir. Anyway. <laughs> Yes, like I said, sir, they, had, yes, they had they had a assistant minister come up, and I'm like, "You really finna get it now?" I remember myself saying that, "You really finna get it now?" And he come up mm. and say, "Brother, do you believe in God?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "I do too." He said, "Do you want what's best for the people out here so that they can come closer to God?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "Yeah, I do too." He said, "I bet if we keep talking, we can find out more things we have in common." I was all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> then, then I had to hear somebody in the crowd say, thank you, because we thought they was fitting a fight. I said, wow. Is that how I looked out here? Oh, oh, man. I look like that? I'm not that guy. Yeah, you are at that time, nigga, because you all about your ego and trying to destroy somebody else. I won. I overcame you with my, with my intellect and my information. I beat you. Man, whatever. Man, them days of me walking around with a backpack full of books and shit looking for motherfuckers at the back. <laughs> that shit's so old now. Yes, sir. But that was the that was yes, the code sir. back then. Backpack full of yes, books. Sir. Let's get it, nigga. Let's get it. For what? Why would you do that to them? Why would you do that? And, and then they got their followers there. You gonna embarrass them in front of their followers? You gonna do that to them? Hold on. With the honorable, what I said, honorable Elijah Muhammad do when he when he went down uh, back in the day when uh, one brother was telling the story of his experience with the honorable Elijah Muhammad, they went down uh, south to help the Muslims down there. Not the Muslims; it was some Hebrew Israelites. Mm. You remember me telling your story, uh, Sai? No, sir. No, sir. Ooh. It's his brother. He he uh, did a thing. He was talking about how he met the honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said and he didn't meet the honorable Elijah Muhammad. He had, he met. Uh, Mr. Bogan or something like that, he called himself. And he said the dude moved into his apartment because he had a, he had some apartments back in the day when black people had apartment buildings and shit, right? He said he moved in mm -hmm. and he was like, mm -hmm. yo, I'm gonna need some extra electricity, so I'll give you extra money for the electricity because I stay up at night reading and stuff late. He's like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. And the honorable Lodge mom was like, well, dad, I like to, you know, you're such a good person, man, I like to, you know, cook dinner for you. You can bite over whoever you want. And he made him a Muslim meal. You know, he went and bought all the food, made a Muslim, and, you know, and everybody became cool with him, especially him and his wife. And then one day, mm -hmm. while he over the apartment owner's complex, the apartment owner, uh, they were looking at the, the TV or something like that, or listen to Ray, I don't remember which one it was, but they heard about these Hebrew Israelites that was down in Florida, because they was in D.C. That's what it was. They was in D.C., if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And the Hebrew Israelites was down in Florida going through some crazy shit. And his, the apartment owner's wife was like, Man, you know, somebody should go down there and do something about that. And so when it, Elijah Muhammad heard that, he was like, you know something? Yeah, me and your husband, we're going to go down there and do that. He said, do something about it. He like, whoa, what? In his head. He didn't want to say nothing because he didn't want to say crazy. But he like, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh -huh, yeah, you're right. Let's go down there and do something. <laughs> so they got in the car and they drive down there. And as they coming across the Hebrew Israelites that got messed up or broken up, they protested or whatever, they were walking from D.C. all the way back up to not D.C., walking from Florida back up to D.C., Baltimore, New York, you know, that area, because that's where they actually were from, but they went down there. They was walking back. He saw mm -hmm. these women and children. So he was, like, pulled over, like, okay, well, where's your leader at? Like, who, what's going on? Why y'all just walking back like that? It's like, well, we don't have no money to get back. And so he went and met with the leader, and the leader was trying to teach them, you know, the knowledge of the Hebrew Israelites and all that other shit. <laughs> but he was like, okay, well, hold on. First of all, let's get your women and children. Let's get your babies and shit out these streets <laughs> trying to walk back. He's yes, like, we, we ain't got the money for that. So he said, him and old boy left. He, they went to the nearest little city, the hot spots in the city that was closest to where they were between Florida and D.C. And he would start teaching and talking about how black people need to get their thing together. And they was taking up collections. They got all this money up. He got enough money for plane tickets and food to help them get their people back there. He said, now the brother on the apartment complex, he's like, what the fuck am I witnessing? He like, what kind of, who does this shit? See what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He was like, I'm not here to debate you. Last mom was like, I'm not here to yeah. argue you on your point and debate you on your philosophy. I'm here to help to get 
the women and children back safely. The men can walk. They need to walk. That's, the, that's on them. But no, nah, we got to, you, you got to protect them. So that's the main thing we're going to do right now. He said, even when he was getting them back safely with cars and transportation and, you know, all the stuff he was making to feed them and all like that, the dude was still trying to teach him about <laughs> the Hebrew Israelite religion. <laughs> he laughed around, I was like, okay, that's what's up. That's, that's what's up. He said he never said nothing about he was the, the uh, messenger of a lie. He never brought up Islam. He never did none of that. He was just like, all right, cool. So now this man mm-hmm. can witness this shit. They back at home. He's like, yeah, it's time for me to move now. You know, I'm gonna keep in touch with y'all, yada, 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 yada. He said, later on, about a year or so later, they got a letter from him. He was saying, hey, you should come to Chicago. You know, it's a bunch of, you know, me and my friends and people, <laughs> you know, who kind of think the way we do are getting together. And they was like, all right. And they got there and that was the first Savior's Day. Da, 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 da. Oh.